Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be repairing indicators, VTR Firestorm Superhawk indicators. These indicators seem to have a fault with them where they have a permanent live and there's no response from the switch which I do find quite odd. Let's take a look. This is the wiring. Now the guy who I purchased this bike off said that the indicators were fully permanently on. Um, the wiring was all fiddled with just like this, he's disconnected it. Don't know who's done that or why. The other wiring is all complete. Now if I wire this correct correctly and these indicators stay on, it means it could possibly be the flasher relay. We'll get into that, we'll see what's wrong first. These connectors all want replacing, they're pretty poor. I'm gonna wrap this wiring around. Ah. That's what we want, isn't it? But we haven't got this. Okay, to take this off, there's two screws here, uh, two screws there, and two plastic screws underneath. Unclip the lights and this should come free. Right, now, my first suspicion was the flasher relay, which I believe this is the flasher relay here. Or, it could be the switch. I don't even hear the flasher relay activating. Now that it's permanently on. When I flick the indicator, it goes off, the light goes out, and I can't hear anything coming from the flasher relay. I will test that, use it with the voltmeter, but there's already problems with this. Uh, the high beam doesn't remain on anyway. So I think, judging by this, there is a problem with this switch. Let's get it off. I really need to invest in a motorcycle lift. It will make things a lot easier. Oh, they're tight. Can't get this out of it all. There we go. There we go. Oh, there's all sorts of water. Stinky water just come out of that. Oh, wow. Well, wow. right. <laughs> so I don't know if that's come out of the uh, switch also. That stinks. It could have even had uh, corrosion here, but it doesn't, sadly. So it has got some water in here. I mean, the water can cause the current to uh, cross paths as well. But I don't think that is a problem. It would be quite helpful if I've got another switch to put in its place, but I just don't at the moment. I could rob one from the other bikes. I might do that. So there is the indicator mechanism. It's all greased up. I'm going to get into that and... In fact, I could just plug it back in now and see if it's a problem, couldn't I? This is not staying in the... It doesn't look brutal in there, but... First of all, let's try the good old WD-40. There could be some corrosion underneath this plate here that's causing these issues. Keep losing where the switch is. Oh, we're on permanently still. Oh. Ah. 
So that's one problem eliminated. Now, it's still on permanently. It cannot function that right indicator. Let's plug the other indicator on. We can work on that permanent live in a minute. Let's see what happens here when we do this. works that's progress for you right then so that's progress isn't it I was correct we have a problem with the switch I may just strip this apart give it a good old clean out inside and see if it springs back into life again which it has we've had progress but we do have this faulty high beam switch here, which appears to be getting better as well. Does it or does it not? It's quite tight. So I want to remove the uh, cable holder first. What's that? Let's have a look. All right. So we've got two contact pins here which do have some sort of corrosion, well it's not corrosion, it's grease actually so they're all greased up might be able to work on it like this actually almost there aren't we let's see if we can get this out Got it. You gotta be careful, there'll be bulb. Ah, there we go. Ah, yeah. So here's, here's the culprit, I think. Let's just get a zoom in on that. Can you see all this corrosion? All this green around here. We clean this up, it may work a lot better. Obviously, this has got corrosion on it as well. So we're gonna clean all that up. Might save ourselves a little bit of money here. Yeah? Right, I've got some paint thinners here and I'm gonna chuck all, well, not the springs obviously, but I'm gonna get these uh, bits and bobs thrown in there so that they can be cleaned. So that's all these little components all nice and clean now. Time to reassemble it. We will put some electrical grease back in here. Oh, a little bit of crap there we've missed. I remember that these three dots, that this dot goes towards this arrow. Just like that. So these will then move into position and divert the current. When we press the indicators, this will slide across and divert the current around. Just like that. All right, we're ready to assemble it now. So if you remember the triangle part there, goes to the top like this and the whole thing sits in there like that now on here uh, these three dots line up with the smaller contact I'll try and get this in here in a wanna there just like that so, 
this is all about twisting and manipulating to press this back in place. So remember that the, the ball bearing part here goes to the top. It's just a bit fiddly to get the wiring in at first. There. Next thing I'm going to get this wire uh, plate bracket holder in place. I think that's right. Okay, so there we are so far. I'll take note of that. This goes in first, so it fits just underneath that. There it is in place. We have two screws. We have a short screw and a long screw. That's all right. Let's plug it in and uh, give him a tester. We're all plugged in. So the left indicator. Right indicator. Fixed, repaired, boom. Okay, that's all together now. We've put the uh, securing plates or whatever they're called inside the switch gear. Everything's assembled correctly. I've given it a little bit of a jiggle around and would you believe it, the light, high beam light is also working. Cleaned it out with the BD40, squirted all that gunk out of there. It's all working. So that has saved me some money from buying a new uh, handlebar switcher, a set of handlebar switches. Okay, next thing is I want to try the horn and just giving that one more test. I want to try the horn and get the light fitted and just try these high beam passing and the horn, like I said, and stuff like that. Right then. So I do have a box of electrical connectors. They're all mixed up because I dropped it and they went all over the floor. I'm gonna fit these male and female connectors. I think I'll use gold. There's a gold, so I want one, two, three. First things first, we're gonna snip that off. We're going to cut that off. And where's the other side? Even though the other side appears fine, I'm still going to cut these off and re-terminate them. In fact, it does actually appear fine. I'm going to clean those up. I'll leave that where it is. So to keep this close to stock factory as possible I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the female ends on this There we go. Just gonna give those a pull. Make sure it's crimped them nice. Yeah. All right, so those connectors are all renewed and good. I might shorten this one, to be honest. I don't like them when they're not uniform. But I plugged all three wires in. 
Um, the indicators work fine, we've tried and tested it. Only one little issue. So, they work fine to an extent. If I disconnect the live wire, it goes out and it will work. So, I'm not got a clue why it's still doing this. So, because this one's flashing fast, it's got a bad connection on it. There we go, that's all there. Right. Okay, so I don't know why it's doing this. Uh, I'm going to take the indicators apart and see what's inside them. I see the problem. Oh my god. I see the problem. There's no corrosion in there, although that one's pretty much corroded. The bulbs. We have a stop and tail light, so these bulbs are for brake lights, not indicators. There's a problem. Obviously the switch uh, was a problem also. We've got that working, that these are brake light bulbs. So I'm gonna find some indicator bulbs and get them changed. So there you have it, indicators are fixed. It turned out to be a dodgy switch which was, which was full of corrosion and also some muppet had put stop and tail light bulbs inside the indicators. Probably because the VTR indicator bulbs are a specific size compared to most indicators, ironically. So someone down the line has put stop and tail light bulbs in there because they can't get in Honda indicator bulbs, probably because they're a little bit more expensive and have given themselves a problem and couldn't figure it out. Then it seems to me like somebody was taken on the bike, has obviously butchered the wiring trying to figure out what's going on. It all turned out to be dodgy indicator bulbs. So stay tuned for the next series of videos. We've got a lot of work to go out with this VTR. It is a very problematic bike. We have got the brakes to service. We have got coils and ignition system to test. We've got some bodywork to refurb. We've got carb jetting to go out. And we've also got a tank Vapor lock problem, which may be coming soon. So stay tuned because these video series may help you keep your VTR on the road. I'll see you next time.